Well, Forbes calls him a top deal maker. He counts Google, PayPal, Foursquare among his investments. He sat on the boards of Twitter, Facebook, Zappos, you know all those companies. It's no wonder angel investor Ron Conway is called the godfather of Silicon Valley. And Chris Valerio standing by with him at the TechCrunch conference. Vic, Chris. That's right. Hey, Betty, that's right. Uh, you know, Ron, you invested in Google when it had a $75 million valuation. It didn't have a business model and it didn't have revenue. When you're looking at the hottest kind of startups right now, what valuations are you seeing? Well, right now we're seeing valuations a lot less than $75 million. Uh, the typical startup is in the 3 to $5 million valuation range and lately with the market blossoming the way it is the valuations are creeping up to probably five or six million so a, a little bit higher but not really out of control there are there are single exceptions but not not too many. Um, one of the things that, that you mentioned recently was about 25% of your portfolio will, in the end, kind of realistically exit as an M&A. A third of your portfolio will close and not, you know, not much will happen. Do you see the M&A side of things from a percentage standpoint creeping up since there it is a relatively closed IPO environment? Yes. Uh, I think M&A is a great exit opportunity for these startups. And a lot of the startups are realistic and know that they're probably their liquidity path is going to be M&A, so it's a great option, and the M&A market is heating up very, very nicely with Google, Microsoft, even Apple is making acquisitions now, which is pretty exciting. With your current portfolio, what percentage do you see exiting as M&A in the next year or two? Uh, in the next year or two of our portfolio, probably 10 to 15 percent of the portfolio will get acquired out of about 140 companies. Betty? Uh, hey, Ron. Uh, you know, as we were introducing you, we were talking about all the investments you've made in companies, uh, you know, for instance, ranging from uh, all the companies you've been involved with as well, from Twitter to Facebook and Google. Uh, and all of those companies right now are facing privacy issues, okay? And the, the question is, are these privacy issues going to crimp, crimp the growth of these Silicon Valley companies or not? Uh, I think the consumers are... Uh, getting used to a more open environment on the internet and so the privacy issues are really a moving target and I feel like Twitter, Facebook, Google are very sensitive to the privacy issues and it is a tightrope but consumers are becoming more and more open on the web and want to share more with each other. Look at all the hundreds of millions of feeds that are traded every day on these services. Um, but, but, but so, are yeah, they, we uh, have to be but, sensitive to privacy. But, but are they? Because as you're seeing more and more information shared, you're seeing more and more consumers say, hey, wait a minute, I didn't know I was sharing all of this. Yeah, well, that's, that's the tightrope. Um, but, but it is an evolving issue, and I think you see Facebook just recently reacting and trying to make privacy settings even more user-friendly. Ron, 10 seconds here real quickly. Don't you see their profit models, though, depending on the erosion of privacy? Uh, absolutely not. These companies are all doing pretty well today, especially Google and Facebook. Um, Twitter is just evolving, but they're doing very well under today's circumstances.